Rashoda Nanda, Roger John Randon. Yashoda Nanda, Roger John Randon. Yamatira Banacha. Yamuna Tira Banchari Jayuradha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, Chapter 9 Brahma's Prayers for Creative Energy Text number four. These verses in a particular meter. Brahma Samhita. Okay, thank you. Tadva idam bhuvanam angala mangalaya. Tadva idam bhuvanam angala mangalaya. Jane smanaroda shitam ta. Upasakanam Tasmai namo bhagavate nu videma tupyam Tasmai namo bhagavate nu videma tupyam Yonadrito narakabhag bi asat prasangai Tat the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Va or idam, this present form. Bhuvana Mangala, O you who are all auspicious for all the universes. Mangalaya, for the sake of all prosperity. Dhyane in meditation. Sma as it were. Naha unto us. Darshitam manifested. Te your upasakanam of the devotees. Tasmai unto him. Namaha, Namaha, my respectful obeisances. Bhagavate, unto the personality of Godhead. Anu videma, I perform. Tubyam, unto you. Yaha, which, anadritaha, is neglected. Naraka Bhag Bihi by persons destined for hell. Asat Prasangahai by material topics. Translation of purport by Shiva Prabhupada. This present form or any transcendental form expanded by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is equally auspicious for all the universes. Since you have manifested this eternal personal form upon whom your devotees meditate, I therefore offer my respectful obeisance unto you. Those who are destined to be dispatched to the path of hell 
neglect your personal form because of speculating on material topics. Regarding the personal and impersonal features of the Supreme Absolute Truth, the personal form is exhibited by the Lord in his different plenary expansions are all for the benediction of all the universes. The personal form of the Lord is also worshipped in meditation as Super Soul, Paramatma, but the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is not worshipped. Persons who are addicted to the impersonal feature of the Lord, whether in meditation or otherwise, are all pilgrims to hell because, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 12.5, impersonalists simply waste their time in mundane mental speculation because they are addicted more to false arguments than to reality. Therefore, the association of the impersonalists is condemned herewith by Brahma. All the plenary expansions of the Personality of Godhead are equally potent as confirmed in the Brahma Samhita, text number 46. Dirpachi eva hita santaram apyupetya dirpayate vivrita hetu samana dhamma yas tadrig eva hita vishnu taya vibharti govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami The Lord expands himself as the flames of a fire expand one after another. Although the original form, or Sri Krishna, is accepted as Govinda, the Supreme Person, all other expansions such as Rama, Nishimha, and Varaha are as potent as the original Lord. All such expanded forms are transcendental. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is made clear that the Supreme Truth is eternally uncontaminated by material touch. There is no jugglery of words and activities in the transcendental kingdom of the Lord. All the Lord's forms are transcendental, and such manifestations are ever identical. The particular form of the Lord exhibited to a devotee is not mundane, even though the devotee may retain material desire, nor is it manifest under the influence of material energy as is foolishly considered by the impersonalists. Impersonalists who consider the transcendental forms of the Lord to be products of the material world are surely destined for hell. Omegyan Tmarantasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshushun Meditamdena Tasmai Shri Guruvain Maha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master he forced my eyes open with the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. Therefore I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Here, Lord Brahma is the speaker. He's our <coughs> great, 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 so many times back, great grandfather, <laughs> Prapita Maha. <coughs> He's the head of our Sampradaya, the head of our school. <coughs> Brahma Samhita. Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami 25. It's about 28, 29 verses, just which end with Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami, describing the, the wonders, the glories, the amazing qualities and uh, features of Govinda. And here, the chapter is entitled Prayers for Creative Energy. Just have a look at the front. It's a nice way to get a, a bit of a, a handle on what is being spoken in the table of contents. We're at page 379. 379. Those who neglect the Lord's personal form is the subject of this section <coughs> personal form of the Lord so attractive incredible variety and um, <coughs> features the constantly uh, expanding uh, Krishna in his form as Sheshanak he's there holding up all of the universes and from his thousands of mouths He's glorifying 
the Supreme Personality of God. And he can never reach the limits of those wonders, those glories, because Krishna then expands himself, becomes newer and fresher, ever new. Navi Yoganam, ever fresh, ever youthful. So these, these the form and the glories and the wonder and the beauty and the, the amazing spectacle of the form of the Lord is uh, an ever, it's a daily festival. It's a daily festival for the residents of Goloka. They, they can't wait every morning to get up and go and see Krishna and, 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 and help in his bathing and dressing and then accompany him out into the, the, uh, the pastures where he's going to spend his day frolicking with the other cowboy boys and, and the calves and, and the cows. Such a, a full, a robust, a, a delightful experience to be involved with Krishna's form. <coughs> Why would anybody avoid it? Why would anybody neglect it? There's that verse in the, the beginning of the 10th canto. Who would not take notice except for a butcher? Somebody who's killing not only themselves, but others. So that's the, the category of the impersonalists, the people who want to deny Krishna a form with word jugglery um, there's no jugglery of words and activities in the transcendental kingdom of the Lord this is a pastime an indulgence a terrible a travesty in this realm in the material realm, that people can talk their way out of a loving relationship with with people and the Supreme Person. <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said that uh, for one who hears Mayavadi Sunile Aparadi, for one who hears the, the impersonal philosophy, the Mayavadi philosophy, then they are condemned. And here the, the quality of their condemnation is that they are destined to go to hell. They're pilgrims on a journey to hell, going to hell very rapidly in a bucket. So it seems like a little thing just to, to turn your back or to ignore the Supreme Person, first night of God. And that, that's, that's what Lord Brahma is mainly describing here, that the form of the Lord. We understand that the, the way that we develop a relationship with Krishna is Nam, Rupa, Guna, Dham, Leela, Leela, Leela would be the, the ultimate stage of developing that relationship to enter into the past time of the Lord. So beginning with the name. So just to ignore the name, you meet people who are in this category, um, destined to go to hell, and you approach them, you ask them, please, can you help us out? And they, they get some understanding who they're talking with. Oh, this is a, a member of the International Society for Hare Krishna. But they cannot express the name. That if they're lucky, they'll call us you, you hairy critters, something like that. But they can't, it just won't come from their mouth. They're, they're, they're so poisoned. It just, it's anathema for them to give anybody else credit. Krishna, I'm the one. And we, we hear about demons who are possessed this um, Asuram Bhava Asrita, those who are possessed of the atheistic nature of demons. And um, in their presence, you feel as though they've got horns and fangs and red hot eyes and they're breathing smoke. It's, it's a frightening experience. So these, these personalities who have this contrary nature, contrary understanding, of the, the beauty and the wonder of the Supreme Lord. It's very unpleasant, very unpleasant to deal with them. There are some amazing pictures in the Bhagavad Gita. It's said that uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So because with words you can create images, you can you can conjure up 
ideas and, and paint a picture for somebody. So uh, an actual picture is worth a thousand words. The, the Bhagavad Gita has a very beautiful painting of the path to hell in juxtaposition to the path to the spiritual world. Does anybody remember that? The steps and the, the main steps leading to hell are lust, greed and anger. And they're personified. There's a, an alluring demoness who is alluring the conditioned soul to take that pathway. And the opposite path is approaching a spiritual master, taking his guidance from the spiritual master, following his instructions, taking um, initiation, and then developing the higher stages of actually entering into the, the spiritual world. <clears throat> so these are the different pathways. There's, there's clear descriptions through the Bhagavad Gita of the, uh, the doorway, Tamal Dvaram, the, the, the doorway leading to hell. And then it comes right back to us. It's, 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 it's all related about the senses. When the, the nine gates of the body are illuminated with knowledge, then one can live peacefully within this city. And uh, those, those diff there's, there's the body. The body is the gross manifestation, uh, which is housing us, the living entity. It's the gross manifestation. On, on the body, there's senses, holes on the body. Above the senses are the sense objects. There's how many senses? How many senses do we have? Seven. Eleven, including the mind. Eleven, including the mind. Any, any higher bids? <laughs> Sixteen? No, Sixteen. There are the five working senses, the five knowledge acquiring senses, the five senses and the mind. So it's a, a heavy tabernacle that we carry. If they're working, uh, some or lots of creatures have far more imperfect senses. There are examples of animals like the, the dogs who can see the, a greater spectrum of colors and the deer who is hearing there's this one section in the Bhagavad Gita where the different animals who are captured by the different senses are described. Who's captured by the tongue? Fish. Fish. And sometimes an example of uh, you're out in the fishermen, they're looking for those schools of fish and if they happen to find uh, a fish in a frenzy, they just throw out the hook, no bait. They just throw out and the, the fish are just going crazy. Their tongues are out of control. They're jumping on the hooks and they're pulling them in, captured by the tongue. And the, the eyes? Form. Maybe another one would be better. The, uh, the ears? The deer, the flute, the, the hunter employs a flute and the, the deer is just ears prick up and, and then the hunter can release his arrow because they're, they're standing motionless. So the, the excuse me? The eyes probably the artists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, form. Form captures the, the 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 mind through the eyes, looking for something, looking and, and seeing something, and then just being amazed. For the brahmachari, the eyes, when the brahmachari is properly situated, uh, are like the fangs of the serpent. They're broken, so you can perceive beauty. And because the fangs are broken, they don't latch on. But if you have a second look, then you've been captured by the, 
the, the sense of sight, hearing, seeing, smell. Which creature is used as an example of smell? Wolf. Wolf. I should remember about the eyes, the, uh, the vulture. The vulture is said to be very powerful in sight. They can be hovering three kilometers up and see some dead flesh on the ground and come down. And so they're, they're controlled by the sight. And the, the elephant is used as an example of one who is captured by the, the, the agitation of the genitals. If you want to, again, hunting example, if you want to be out hunting and capture an elephant, then do you, do you know the process? Dig a big hole. Male elephant. Shoot a female shield. Shoot a shield. Elephant is the, uh, the, the lure. Dig a big hole. Cover it with some grass. Yeah. Male elephant goes charging. Bloop! The uh, undertimishram. The blind well. Mm. Could the hole be sense of smell? Mm hmm. But the wild boar, like they sniff out truffles under the box. They have a good snout, yes. and they're fosking around in the in the offal, looking for those tasty bits. Yeah, yeah. Well, really gross example. It's just vivid. The human being, even more gross, has all of those senses active, not as not as powerful, not as dynamic as the individual creatures that we, we described. So the senses. Without Krishna as the object, are out of control. Even one of the senses, which focuses on the object of the senses, can take away your intelligence and you, you're swept away. So, those who do not have the love, the the focus on the personal form of the Lord. And when we talk about Krishna, Krishna is, is present in his form, he's present in his name, he's present in his prasadam, he's present in so many things. If we don't have that as our focus, then the senses are vulnerable and we can be captured and taken away. So somebody who is addicted to, somebody who is attracted to, somebody who, who, who follows the, the understanding of the impersonalists, they've got... Aruriya Krishna Parampadam Tada. They 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 think that they're okay, they think they're liberated, they think they're better than than everybody. But because they have not developed a relationship with the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then they're destined for hell. Hell is it's not too bad for the devotees, Narayana Prasa, the Nakutashin and Bibhiti, they don't mind going to hell so long as Krishna is there in the form of preaching, in the form of some service. But hell without Krishna is not a nice place. There's a, um, a Christian preacher who was trying to convince people about the, the nastiness of hell. He was in a, in a mining town and uh, he started off by saying, if you go to hell, it's all dark and dismal and it's smelly. And they, they didn't budge an inch, they weren't, weren't affected because these were miners, they were underground, they were in dank, dark, dangerous situations every day. So after a while, this, this preacher was quite intelligent. He, he understood. Oh, he said also, where there's all these, all your, all, your, all your mates will be down there. It's all, it's a horrible place. All those nasty people, that, oh, all my friends will be there. That's fine. <clears throat> so eventually the, the preacher tweaked Okay, in hell, there are no newspapers. Oh, I couldn't, I'm not going to go to hell without the daily fix. Then that's not worth living. So many petty things that somebody who is destined for hell is, is addicted to. In Melbourne, they were studying the seventh canto of the Sri Bhagavatam, and the verse was describing. Um, it's easy to go back to Godhead. Easy. 
Which one? B. B. He gets stuck in there, yeah. the, the smell, and then in the evening the lotus flower closes up, and he's yeah, the bee with the lotus. Thank you. Bee with the lotus flower. So to go back to Godhead is quite simple. Just use the tongue for the right purpose. Chant Krishna's name, take prasadam, associate with the devotees. It's really simple. But to go to hell requires a big endeavour. The, the, uh, the regulative principles which we follow, they are the pillars of irreligion for non-devotees. And in order to, to fulfill those meat-eating, illicit sex, gambling and intoxication, it takes a big endeavour. You need to develop slaughterhouses to supply the meat. You need to um, maintain and, and look after brothels for the, for the urge, the need for illicit sex. Intoxication. You've got to open breweries. You've got to supply the intoxication. Gambling, casinos, race courses. It's all there on the, the little <laughs> thing. I just push a button and you're in, into that, that whole world. Um, life is so artificial nowadays. People are apparently in, in the realm of uh, collecting funds. They're quite happy to give 50, 100. It's just, just a push of a button, just wave a card, and, and there goes something you don't even see it it's all it's all ephemeral it's all electronic so it's become much easier and therefore it's become more difficult to keep your focus to avoid being distracted fortunately we have the opportunity to see krishna dressed and looked after so nicely anytime and we have the association of devotees uh, I was uh, sent to Canberra one stage, <coughs> but the, uh, the GVC gave me instruction, whatever you feel like the need for association, more association, jump on a bus, get on the phone, take it. You've got to have that association. It's there, it's available. The impersonalists, the, the people who are under the influence of Maya, they, sh they shrink, they, they shirk uh, association. It was too, it's too good. It's going to point out where you are deviated from the, the practices of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so it's easy to go back to Godhead. It takes a lot of energy to go to hell. Fortunately, by the mercy of the, the pure devotee, the spiritual master and the association of the great Vaishnavas, we have the, the impetus to support the uh, motivation to keep in touch with, with Krishna and his holy name, his personal forms. <clears throat> Just finish there and see if anybody has any any questions or comments. Lord Brahmana Ki Jai. Ram I was thinking with that nice recollection you offered of that old painting. Person going, then down the steps, or going up the steps. Suppose I remember the middle step that, that, that divides which way you're going to go is attachment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, depending on where our attachment lies, we're going to go up or down. That's interesting, yeah. The class on going to hell is difficult that was focused on attachment. Yeah. Attachment we have to have, we can't be without attachment, just like the caterpillar. The caterpillar wants to move forward, but he, he won't release his back legs until his front legs are, are firmly attached. Yeah, so to understand the quality of our attachment, it's not going to go away. Sometimes we, um, well, personally speaking, uh, the tongue, the tongue has discovered some good prasadam, and uh, brahmanas who are expert in honouring prasadam they say, just take prasadam up to the neck, because you never know when you might get such good prasadam again. So uh, sometimes you find yourself honouring prasadam in vast quantities. If you sit next to somebody who's quite a voracious eater, then you will take more than you would normally take. So sometimes that attachment is being used by Krishna to, to fuel you so you can engage in some 
to pursue in the future some, some big endeavor. So the attachment, when it's focused in the right direction, is good, it's healthy. Sometimes we just need help to see, well, how, where is it going? How is Krishna guiding me? How is Krishna directing me? And I know some devotees, they, they uh, worry about their shape, their size, their, their girth, and so they, they don't take much prasad. After a while they realize, well, no, I, I, need, I need some strength. I've got to pack it on a bit more. And they end up like a tortoise. They're just, but that's, that's what it requires to function, to function properly. So our attachment, we, it's hard to decipher sometimes how is that attachment serves to Krishna. Negative attachment, even that, that's also hard to, to understand. Well, I'm attached to, to the newspaper. I'm attached to, to getting information. I'm attached to, to being involved in, in this, now it's a super highway. What is necessary? What is overindulgence? What's, what's a bookworm who's just amassing more and more information? Where, where do we draw the line? So the quality of the attachment, it can be assessed. And, and in the Brahmacharya show, I remember, we would regularly, once a month, if possible, go through our locker, tidy it up, and if there's anything that we could say I haven't used or I won't use, discarding it. So little tricks how to, to deal with attachment even. And the attachment is the, the first port of call on the way either to the spiritual world or to hell. Um, question on the question called the example. Yeah. Um, on this idea of an impersonalist going to hell is bewildering to me because and it, it, and it, I mean, it might require some distinction as to what impersonalist that is, whether it's a Brahmavani or a Mayavadi, etc. But <clears throat> compare an impersonalist to just a pure karmi materialist who's engaged with their senses in all kinds of mischievous behavior. When you say, okay, they're destined for hell because they're actually, they don't even care about that. They're, they're ready to make so many sinful activities and cause so much harm to other living beings in order for their own sense gratification. Then you have an impersonalist who might not have a full conception of the Supreme Personality of God and a partial conception of Brahman energy of the universe. And the devotee, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam is, is saying, Lord Brahma is saying that they're destined for hell. Is this hell we're talking about from the point of a devotee where there is no Krishna, there is no Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore that is hell for us? So, you know, I could go back home, there's no Krishna there, that is actually hell. Or are we actually talking about this physical destination, the Naraka, the 25 planets of hell? Kumbi Pakar and yeah, because it, it, it's quite bewildering to me that an impersonalist who mm. has at least some partial conception of the of Godhead is destined for hell. Mm. Good question, and you've answered quite a lot of it. The uh, the terminology used in the scriptures is open to multiple interpretations depending upon your mentality uh, Mahabharat is often considered a heaven destination narration um, the the forefathers oh, we, 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 we're being uh, denied our place in the heavenly planets because we haven't got any children. So, whose name? Jarat Karu, I think. You're our saving grace. You, you get married to somebody who's called Jarat Karu and, and then your child will uh, release us from this plight where we cannot go to heaven. And at the same time, the snake sacrifice will be averted. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's the, the different dimensions of heaven uh, for persons who don't have a very, uh, who don't have access to the Vedic literatures, then heaven is a place of eternal Saturdays where you'll live with the family. 
for us, we read, read, read about heaven, we can, we can relate to that um, expression, but we know what is the real eternal place called Lokabrindavan. And even in the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha planets, and then there's different levels. So it depends upon your, your perspective. And in that way, that depends upon your, your realization, depends on your, your pure intelligence, not Abhisuddha Buddha then you can actually perceive what is your destination. So uh, for those people who are, are not gross materialists, they may be pious. Higher than somebody who's pious is somebody who's religious or spiritual. But higher than that is somebody who has a devotional outlook. So there's different levels of understanding according to your, your level of purification, your level of, of existence. So destined for hell, uh, anywhere except firmly established at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, anywhere where there's no association of devotees, Ramananda Roy came up with that answer, the Lord Chaitanya up, that's hell. It's, it's, it's like an encouragement. It's a statement like that. And we have to be careful when we're describing to people that, we, that they don't take it out of context. Uh, this is an encouraging verse from Lord Brahma, and he's expressing his abhorrence of the idea of not having Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Jami, that that opportunity to glimpse the Supreme Personality got it. And so he's 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 directing or he's analyzing, he's he's identifying those people who don't. Because we actually see so many devotees who come to Krishna consciousness through the person. So that's just one. In personalism, um, Krishna says, everybody follows my path in all respects, but as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So to become conscious, become aware of something above gross matter, that's um, not quite the beginning of the human platform. There are sophisticated animals who, who are more inclined, the, the deer to sound, uh, etc., etc., rather than gross matter. The pig is, is absorbed in the tongue and, and sex life. So the, the, there's more elevated creatures, more elevated stages. To come to the human platform, we have to atato uh, brahma jikyasya. We have to start to inquire, who am I? The human form of life is a wonderful gift. It's the crossroads, again, the attachment, up or down. If you misuse it, then you lose it, and you can go down from many, many eons. Ram Shankar. My understanding, Ramana bodies have accepted as a bona fide spiritual path, isn't they? they are spiritualists, but because their conception of the supremest empty oneness without Krishna, and as devotees, we see that as hell. And probably see it. eventually they fall in because they get them one only. There's no activity there. And the minor bodies has a different category, different categories. They're offensive. They're offensive. Yeah, they're upper bodies, the Brahma bodies. The, the, the whole concept of impersonal liberation. Um, Prabhupada often describes, and we use it a lot, to be in solitary confinement. The full nature of, of the realization of the absolute truth is Satchitananda, Vigraha. So eternity, full of knowledge and bliss. How much bliss is there when you're just on your own and there's nothing to interact with? That's torture. That's that solitary confinement. So that's suffering. That's, it's intolerable to have the chance to share your realization, to, to expand your realization, and that's, that's pleasure. And Krishna says he's not present in so many places, but where the devotees are gathering together and they're discussing, then he's actually present there. That's a higher manifestation of his, his, his uh, being. <clears throat> Impersonalists and personalists. Vaishnavi. Have faithful Christians. <laughs> Never alone. I was just appreciating that 
we were saying that not to take the verse out of context, that it's actually an encouraging verse. Uh, verse. Because in Christian uh, theology, they uh, preach about hellfire and de- eternal hell and damnation, whereas this is um, giving hope that it's not that it's eternal, but we all, as you were saying, that we always have a choice. And I just also report that even in the pages of Bhagavatam, we hear of great personalities, even though they progress so far along, they're always navigating and there's always danger, even on the royal road. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so I was appreciating that we follow the process that Prabhupada gave, and we, um, like as Ramai Swami was saying, you know, devotees ask where it's a balance, but it's constant but, um, mm. choices we're making. Yeah, it's a risky business. The the example is given of if you're using a very sharp razor blade, if you're not careful, then there'll be blood. So the pathway, spiritual life, is like that edge of the razor blade, very fine path. However, if we take shelter of the low suit of spiritual master and we follow in his footsteps, then that razor's edge path becomes like a six-lane highway. Very easy to follow in the footsteps of somebody. And we have the, the wonderful Srila Prabhupada, who is the Acharya for the next 10,000 years with his books and with his, his ISKCON. And that's a very broad path, very broad path to follow. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Srila Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Guru.